Boom. What's up, fam? Anthony Dream Johnson here today. Founder of Redman Group, 21 Convention, 22 Convention, 21 University, 10,000 other things on the internet. Here today with episode 164 of the Redman Group. Joining me is going to be returning guest to the show and an alumni speaker of the 21 Convention. He's a big time YouTuber. Um, I guess you'd call him an armchair philosopher and psychologist. Uh, does great work on YouTube and helping people heal from toxic relationships, uh, complex trauma, childhood trauma, all kinds of really cool things. Uh, he did a great speech at our convention and an entire course actually on his own that we have at 21 University, which is today's sponsor, as you can see. Pull it up right here. So today's sponsor of the show is uh, Richard Grannon's actually the guest of the show, his CPTSD masterclass that we filmed most of with 21 Studios and that we host at 21 University. So you can go to the link in the description. You can learn more about that. Um, if you want to buy it, uh, you know, my company makes money, so I appreciate that. All the money that you spend on it will go to the we get anyway, will go to hookers, blow and strippers. Um, so if you want to do that, I appreciate it big time uh, by the course. It's really good, actually. It's over eight hours long. It's got nine videos. It's super fucking savage. I love it. We put out some previews lately, too. You can check those out. They're on YouTube as well as on the page. Um, one is about escaping abusive relationships. And Will Smith, I think, is in one, which is why we did that. And then crazy female psychopaths and vampires, which is why we have that there. As far as Richard himself, you should go check him out uh, directly. His main content is on YouTube and to some degree Instagram as well. His Instagram is linked up on the uh, right here with this on his YouTube channel. But he's got like thousands of videos. He's got uh, over 350,000 subscribers. He has another channel too, Richard Grant and Philosophy, which has another like 50,000 subscribers. A lot of very helpful videos that have helped me and a lot of you guys. This is one from uh, 21 Convention we filmed. But he's got a ton of stuff. And he works with a lot of the, a lot of other people too, collabs and stuff, different interviews. Uh, Sam Vaknin, uh, the Asian guy, uh, I forget what his name is. Ten Tentacle Croissant, uh, he's pretty cool. I like that guy. Anyway, check out Richard's channel. Do subscribe. Just go to YouTube, search Richard Grannon, and I think he's launching a website, which you can see there too. So I don't know the URL anymore, but he has a website, Instagram, all that great stuff. Anyway, without further ado, please help me welcome back to the Red Man Group, Mr. Richard Grannon. How you doing, man? I'm very well, sir. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. I apologize to you and everybody watching for my casual look. I'm in a car. I've just come from the gym. It's just the way this weekend has worked out. This was the best place for me to get signal. Um, but yeah. it is a serious topic, and uh, and we do take it seriously. Being yeah. paid in in um, blow and and uh, strippers, I, I wasn't aware that that was how I was going to get my cut um that's I'm what i was told that's what that's what corporate told me you that's what i mean i don't <laughs> that's know what I, that, that's what i asked for is this standard in florida is this how payments oh yeah are made? oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> this is a florida man payment scheme. <laughs> this the stripper capital of the world and my to my knowledge is tampa florida it's about two hours it, west of me really so, oh yeah they have a shit ton of strip clubs not that i would know firsthand or anything so if i wanted to sort of study cptsd there's plenty of oh yeah potential clients yeah. And, and people to study there <laughs> with unlimited unlimited problems i had an old friend that used to be a bouncer at a strip club like one of the doormen Sorry. and he just would come home every night with you know a bunch of tips and a bunch of uh problems from these strippers that would, they would tell him and he'd always tell me he's like they have unlimited problems don't ever date them i never did technically yeah uh yeah. so yeah well, this, I've actually just just gone back uh, to doing uh, nightclub security work just because I was spending so much time on the internet and so much time on my own, basically turning into a nerd yeah. online. And uh, it reminded me that there was a time when I worked in London where I did work at, uh, um, for strippers, but it wasn't a strip club. It was like this. They were a sort of a federation. They were Brazilian of strippers and then they would hire out locations and then they'd hire me i speak a little bit of portuguese for the uh as the security not that they needed it because they're ferocious enough themselves they easily chuck the guys out but just for the legal side of it but yeah the tips were amazing absolutely um, amazing. i was like i'm in the wrong game i should be doing what you guys are doing yep. so i want to talk about so, a number of things today it's been a while since we had yeah. you on the show i like i kind of like having you on every year as like an annual guest um, kind of like a Jack Donovan, a Stefan Molyneux. You're one of like my, I guess a regular, if an annual could be considered a regular thing. But one of the top guys on YouTube that I love who's not banned yet. Um, you've had an issue before. I know they, they did a strike against you and your Instagram got I'm, nuked. And I'm close to being banned. If I say one more thing about um, oh, being shit. spiked in the arm, 
then uh, then yeah i've got two two medical misinformation strikes hanging over me one more comment and and they'll delete the whole channel on youtube wow holy shit yeah. now th those will go away in a number of months they usually last 90 days the strike system yeah. if they even follow it sometimes they don't sometimes they do oh, but... okay okay that's good to know i mean molly knew had no strikes and they fucking just nuked his whole channel so yes. and with me yeah, they, the... they they demonetized all channel as you remember that and there was no strikes they just said "Fuck you give me your money now we got it back but that was like that was balls in the chopping block you know I'm I'm actually I spoke to some people at Rumble uh, three days ago. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find it hard to get motivated to upload new content to YouTube because of the appalling way in which they've acted. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm yeah. gonna move to Rumble where they have assured me I can speak completely freely. They just have a totally different model. They don't sell data. They yep. don't. Um, you, it's not selected by algorithm. It's basically it's just what people want to see. If they want to see it, you get the views. So yeah. I'll be moving to Rumble soon. 100% dude. We have, a, we have a channel too I opened up a few months ago. Technically I started like a year ago, but I never used it. But once yeah. our thing on YouTube happened, I was like rumble, 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 rumble. And I love it. I've talked to them too over email. They actually moved the headquarters to Florida near my hometown. Um, oh, good. Their CEO moved to Florida. They also bought Locals, which is like Patreon. And yes. you can use that for like premium content. We do that a little bit now with the audios from, you know, yes. 21 convention speeches. So Rumble's fucking savage, and they've been around. I don't think they're, they're going to get banned off the app stores either. And they have a lot of infrastructure and money. They just got like a hundred million or something from Peter Thiel, the co-founder uh, of PayPal. Yeah. So uh, Rumble might be the thing that finally takes on YouTube, finally, because everything else is good. falling apart. You know. I I just find it, mate. When you know, when I see what's happened to you and Molyneux and and a lot of other people around me, and the fact that yeah. like I'm editing my own words now, I just don't <laughs> find it motivating. I'm just like I don't. You know, yeah. I could have a lot more followers on there, be making a lot more on there. And I just think I just don't I don't want to feed the beast. I don't want to feed their system because I think it's completely degenerate. It's completely corrupt at this point. Intellectually degenerate and corrupt. Well, beyond that, Absolute too. I mean, degenerate. everything. They total, promote. De total degenerate. Yeah. Dude, we should get a bunch of we should get like a couple hundred billion dollars like Elon and just buy YouTube. Like if you bought <laughs> YouTube or I bought YouTube, that would be fucking great, you know? It, it would, it would <laughs> just the small issue of, uh, of the, uh, of the coinage. That's the only issue. Yeah. Dude, if Elon buys uh, Twitter, man, I'm excited about that. I don't fully trust Elon. I do like him a lot, no. but I do think he's on the right side of history, kind of like a Trump. And, uh, I trust him pretty highly for a billionaire, which normally I think there's all evil scum, unfortunately. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching from a distance. I don't really have strong opinions about Elon where I've talk, seen him talk about Twitter. I'm sort of looking, I'm going, it just sounds like, I think Elon is on, is on with all due respect. I think he's on, I think he's on the spectrum. I don't think he would deny that. Like he is probably yeah. on the spectrum, like a lot of yeah. highly intelligent people are. I think he's at 160 IQ. Dude, um, all the best people are think, autistic. All of them. They're my favorite people. Well, and yeah, <clears throat> they're, they're the best. And, um, I think it's a, a somewhat naive step. Not, and I mean that without criticism. I'm not saying naive negatively. I'm saying naive, possibly positively. Mm -hmm. He's just seen a problem. He's an engineer. He goes, people want talk. People not able talk. Me make people talk again. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I kind of, I, I think, and I don't think there's much, I don't think there's an agenda beyond that. Like he's an engineer, he's seen a problem and he thinks he can provide a solution to it. So I'm yeah. watching that. I think, I think it's healthy. I think it's healthy to see the debate go in public. Like, do we want to be like, where is this discrete boundary of, of free speech becoming hate speech and who gets to decide? I mean, and obviously it's been massively overstepped by, by YouTube, which is extraordinarily ideologically driven. And it's, yeah. it's who wants to live in a in a world like that where your politics don't match what what the politics of the platform provider are, and so you get silenced. I think it's disgraceful. It is, man, and it's it's sad, particularly on YouTube, because it used to be much more so than Facebook ever was, and even Twitter. Twitter, they would LARP and pretend to be like back in the early 2010s, they would pretend that like Twitter was saving democracy and various like African shitholes and stuff like that. Or whatever these you know these different you know african spring or what was it the arab spring all this stuff arab spring yeah back in 2011 yeah but now of course the big brother but youtube though is a place where there was like very little woke stuff and it was very free and open because i was on here making oh, videos it was wild YouTube, yeah youtube was wild it was the wild west yes i remember when they banned my self-defense channel in 2012 
Wow. And it was like, okay, the the winds of change, the winds of change are here, and they started moving towards being very corporate and very institutional. And yeah. then I think it was 2013, a year later, the White House had its own channel, and I was like, this is over, this is mm. done, this is done. Like, it, like it, it, they they banned my self defense channel for being too violent, and I was like, what what do you guys want me to do? Like, teach people how to defend themselves from street violence non violently? It was okay. insane, but but yeah, what well, since that time, I think from 2006 to 2012, YouTube was another entity. It was a completely different thing. Yeah, I loved it too, man. It was so awesome. I hope Rumble has that same, and I think it does have a lot of that same energy. It's a tra it's a challenge if it can survive though, and have enough funding and fight off different legal suits. They actually have a lawsuit against Google right now for two billion dollars that's uh, filed. Really? Yeah. They, they're accusing Google of manipulating, probably correctly, that Google is manipulating search results about videos to favor YouTube, their platform, over other platforms like Rumble and BitChute there's and no, whatever. There's no doubt. Yeah. Does anybody yeah. doubt that these fuckers are doing that? I mean, there's just no doubt. Yeah. And this is, this is where it ties in with the theme, you know. These are essentially narcissistic, psychopathic uh, corporations rather than individuals. Yeah. And we are now all in an abusive relationship with them. We're being gaslit. We're being promised one thing and delivered something else. It's a classic bait and switch. This is what narcissists do. Come here. You can say what you want. Share your content. I mean, for God's sake, where's their, where's their humility? Where yeah. We made them. We made that they don't make content. And when YouTube does make content, none of, none of the people watching it have seen it, but YouTube does make content. It is garbage garbage they're useless and then they treat us the people who they have relied on until yeah. they became this multi-billion dollar corporation they treat us like crap yep. and they say okay you're, you're done we used you it's classic narcissism classic for narcissistically abusive relationships yeah it's like being thrown out of the moving car is what it felt like for me personally yeah. i mean like i run a business and my channel is not personal like yours is richard grant and it's personal to you uh much yeah. more so than 21 studios is which is part me as a speaker but part you and literally you know 250 other fucking speakers but even so as the founder it was really uh there was an emotional impact of it when they took when they kicked us out of the partner program we got banned in a in a specific way they took all the money and they put my business in some ways in jeopardy and stuff our ability to monetize our videos it's one of the main ways we do it was youtube advertising which has worked really well for all these years and then they just fucking just fucked me in the ass man it sucked we got it all back for now, but of course it'll happen again. And I don't know when next month or next year or two years from now or whenever the fuck. So a mate that I do tentacle croissant with is, uh, is Pierre XO. You mentioned him before. You oh yeah, yeah. 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 Tentacle man. Pierre yeah, XO. Yeah. Uh, he, um, he's more, he's more tuned into this, but he's been telling me he knows other YouTube. He's a, he's a, he's a social media influencer. He is a YouTuber. He's not, like I use it to get the word out about CPTSD, narcissistic abuse. You run your business from it. He's yeah. actually a, a, a legitimate influencer. And he says a lot of influencers in the last four or five years have just gotten burnt out. They're, they're struggling with legitimate psychological problems because yeah. of this kind of gaslighting, uh, um, manufactured consent, coercive situation that they feel like I'm, into. I'm walking on eggshells every day on this channel, yeah. just like you. It's, right. it's really right. legitimately abusive. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And this is if they told us this is what we were doing from the beginning, we would have said, well, screw you. We'll form our own platforms or whatever. But they yeah. didn't. So it's a bait. It's a bait <clears throat> switch. You can't you can't do this to people and claim that it's fair and legal and democratic and that you're the purveyors of social justice when you act in such a socially unjust way. These people are bullies. They're absolute predators and bullies. Yes. Yeah. I love when you call that out. I remember in 2019 in Poland when you spoke. Uh, it was something that I was familiar with, but hadn't heard uh, in this specific way before. And you did a great job articulating it. And you're talking about a feminist accuse everybody being bullies and sexist pigs and all this stuff. And you're like, bully, bully, who's the bully? Because they say yeah. it's it's really like classic projection. These people Absolutely. are aggressive, aggressive, beat them up bullies who uh, will use speech and other mechanisms like cancel culture and even threats to bully the shit out of everybody. And they've been doing this for, for decades. Like, it's insane. Well, in that example, I was specifically talking about feminists accusing men of being toxically masculine. Mm -hmm. And I was mm -hmm. like, no, you're the ones who are toxically masculine. 
You're yeah. the ones who are animus possessed. You're the tyrants, the bullies, the patriarchs, the finger waggers, the ones who are didactic and preaching to everybody. Where yeah. you're the toxically masculine bullies, and yeah. the, the most of the men who are around now, they're anima possessed. They're depressed. They're fat. They're anxious. They're like jellyfish now. Yeah. Who did that? Who did? Wasn't men that did that? It was essentially it was feminist. It was feminists, and then the toxic echoes of feminism that yeah. came after that, which is basically, uh, well, that's know, a, that's woke culture. Dressed up misandry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also, if I'm following too, like I view like woke culture and all this wokeism and cancel culture and even the politically correct stuff from the 90s that sprung up, at least in America, it was a thing. I'm sure in Britain too, it became, you know, PC stuff. Is it politically correct? Yes. These are all yeah. children of feminism ideologically. Like the woke stuff didn't, didn't just fucking come out of nowhere. It's from feminism. No, no. Like, and well, Marxism and, and, and stuff. But Well, and the, the funny thing about woke is it's actually... It's actually a concept from black American culture, which was appropriated by guilty white people, by guilty white liberals in America. So mm. woke is not even woke. Even that's stolen. These people are always whinging about cultural appropriation. They stole the title that they used. These people are thieves. They're total degenerates. They're yeah. just degenerates. They steal everything. I was doing a, a Red Man Group live at the 21 Summit last year, and I went off on this kind of little monologue with some of the, the panelists we had going on Red Man Group on the stage. And what I wanted to communicate to women, what I was able to say is that feminism to all women there, we had them on the audience and then on the internet later, like feminism robbed you. It robbed you of your future. It robbed you of your femininity. It made you a weirdo, abusive bully in some ways. That's going to be a spectrum depending on the person but or the female, the birthing person. But it, it really robbed them. It robbed them of the future. It robbed them of their fertility. It lied to them and manipulated them. It told them to put career first and advanced schooling first and put motherhood and family last. These things are like biologically delusional, even if you have the ability politically and should to make bad choices for your freedom. But it's like they, they fucking robbed you. They robbed you of good relationships. They robbed you of being feminine, of embracing your femininity. Uh, of all this stuff and they they're thieves is really what we need to frame them as correctly it's 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 a con it's it's the whole thing is a con it basically just doubled the workforce and half the pay that yeah. was the whole thing it's about emancipation no it isn't it was yeah. about getting you into work it was about turning you into a wage slave and getting you into debt and exhausting you and taking away from your family and taking you away from your children you yep. were sold a bill of goods and and i think I think it's high time we have this conversation like boldly and publicly. It's not a man. It's not a man versus woman conversation. It really isn't. It's a psychopathic narcissist versus normal person conversation. Do you want to be exploited? Do you want to be ideologically infected with nonsense that brainwashes you into doing stuff you don't want to do that hurts you whilst being forced to say that you love it? Is there anything more narcissistic than that? And I think yeah. that's it. That's exactly what this is. It was a con. The whole thing was a was a terrible con. And now, what is it? 40, 50, 60 years later, we are, you know, we're, we're, we're reaping the results of that. We're going to bear that burden for generations to come unless yeah. we do something drastic uh, to, to fix it. It reminds me of a great book by Swiss psychologist Alice Miller. It's called Free Your Own oh, yeah. Good, The Hidden Cruelty in Child Rearing and the Roots of Violence. Uh, she died a couple years ago, but she wrote um, a long series of books from like the late 70s until she her death, I think in like 2010 or something like that. Um, a lot of it reminds me of your work, which is why I brought it and had it ready for the show. But also with feminism, it's like, you know, that's talking about abusive uh, parenting and childhood and stuff. But it's that saying, like, it's for your own good. It's for your own good. Like feminism's for your own good. You know, doubling the workforce, having the pay is for your own good. Abandoning your children is for your own good. You know, all this like, insane shit. And why then would I have, because I, I speak to mainly women, it's 80% women. Do I have women constantly contacting me privately? They'll never say it publicly, but they don't want this. I have women saying all I want, I have yeah. women who will come to me. Some, uh, some of them as young as 27. All I want to do is be a mother and have children. Yeah. But I can't say that publicly because if I do that, I feel like I'm a criminal and I'm going to be outcast and I've done something wrong. I'm like, how how is that about the emancipation of women? Shouldn't women be allowed to choose what they want to do? So how is it we've created the feminism has created a culture where a woman can't say, yeah, I'd like to be a stay at home mom. I don't want I don't I don't want a real estate business. Thank you. I don't yeah. I don't want to live that life. I don't I just want kids. That's all. It's, I just want to have children. And we live in a, a culture now where we go, oh, that's shit. Making yeah. people is shit. What is more magical? 
than the ability to make life. Yep. How has that become evil? How has that become so diminished and, so, and treated with such contempt? It's insane. We've, we have built an insane ideological prison for ourselves, and now we're rotting inside of it. A woman, brother. A woman. A woman. <laughs> Um, I wanted to bring up a. Person. I wanted to bring up a comment. I thought was because I had this on my mind too to ask you. So uh, you know, commenter SD, whoever that is, thanks for commenting. This, if you're not familiar with Richard, you have to watch his videos to get the gist of him. He went from I don't agree with this part, but he went from stuffy online therapist to talking about real issues, no holds barred psychology. What psychology? Now I wanted to make a my own comment on this too. That some point in the past six to twelve months. You've always been a truth seeker, in my view, at least since I've been watching you since like uh, late 2017, early 2018. We first started talking and stuff about YouTube and speaking and all that. But you have, um, I think like me in some ways, we've both had our own trajectories online and as men and individuals. But you've gotten significantly more uh, brazen and aggressive and bold. And I fucking love it. I mean, you have like it, it turned up the volume on your inner alpha male. You're like a pure blood alpha male now. Before you were like mostly alpha. Now you're like hardcore alpha male. I'm teasing the Before audience. Before I was purple pill. <laughs> no, you're like hardcore red pill as fuck now. And I, I think part of that now for me, and I imagine for you too to some degree, but you can comment. You know, we've seen the world get so fucking crazy exponentially. So not in a not in a you know gradual way. It's been really exponential in the past two and a half years around the world, not just America and Britain, but everywhere it's just gone. Everything's fucking burning and it's crazy. Yeah. And for me, I've cranked up the intensity and the volume as a response to that. And I think it's a healthy response because it's like you mentioned this abusive relationship. The abuse is increasing. So you have to defend yourself more aggressively and fight back more aggressively. And I think that's what's going on with you. But if you can comment on that, because your tone has really gotten this guy's not kidding. Like you're you've taken the gloves off. It's what it feels like you're fighting bare knuckle now. I'm like, yeah, it's fucking great. Share, share, share. <laughs> like... <laughs> well, so sometimes, like, um, I think from 2019 till now, when I first spoke at 21 Studios, yeah. um, <clears throat> obviously I, I had my criticisms of things, but the last three years has really ripped the 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 sort of dressing off the wounds now we see how bad it is in some yeah. ways the abuse has gotten worse and in some ways it's just gone on for too long and i i sort of have that i think it's a i think the romans used to write it on sundials and uh the the roman clock and it would say it's 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 always later than you think so i have that in my mind i'm aging i see my sister's two young boys growing up and i'm like if we assume that it's later than you think, and I believe we're on a track that leads to gulags and genocide, yeah. then however close I think we are to gulags and genocide, we're closer. So there isn't the time. There just isn't the time. And anyway, what are they going to do? What are, what's anybody going to do to me? You're going to cancel me? You're going to write mean comments about me? Boo fucking who? So what? Go the fuck ahead. We fought for the freedom that we had. We fought to have all the beautiful things that we have. Our forefathers fought for them. And for generations, it was blood, sweat, and toil for this. So I can sit and talk to you on my little fucking iPhone and sit in my nice car outside my nice gym. I didn't build this. I didn't build any of this. I could be a slave for somebody now. But other people fought so that I would have the freedom to do this. Yep. And now... I respect that and I'm grateful for that and I don't take it for granted. Yep. We all know war's broken out in Ukraine. Britain could potentially be unofficially at war with Russia at this point. Let's not take any of our order or any of our freedoms for granted. We yeah. have to fight for them and they are being eroded. I think what's happening in America, it, obviously America goes first and then we'll follow at the moment is disgusting. Like some of the stuff that's going on with trying to teach little children about adult sexuality and weird adult sexuality. Oh, oh, niche, let me niche adult sexuality and fetishes. And I'm like, what? Why are we even having that debate? Why is that even a discussion? It should out, be completely illegal. I got this. Check out this meme I posted yesterday. I found it. I fucking love it. People are going apeshit over it. Uh, maybe you saw it. I'll post it real quick. Hang on. Oh, the wolf. Perfect. The wolf. Yeah. I, I just I want to that. read some books to your chickens. Yeah, totally. It's I insane. Like these people all belong in jail. You don't belong within, you know, 10 miles of a fucking school. 
if you want to teach six year old children about butt sex, like I'm not okay with okay. this. So, so, okay. So, so anybody who finds what you just said offensive, right? Vividly imagine me uh, with the sunglasses on, slightly sweaty from the gym, in a vest, and I go into your school and I'm going to talk to your six year olds and I'm going to tell them with a fair degree of, of detail, not totally intimate detail, but this is what happens. My sec, my heterosexual sexual preferences, the kind of girls I like to have sex with, the positions we have sex in, how, you know, the role play we did. Do you really? Really? You would just sit back and go, no, that's that's very good because six year olds <laughs> need to know what this 44 year old man likes to do in his spare time. It, what, what are we doing? Yeah. I don't even know how this is a debate. And when I say it's later than we think, that's the, that's what I'm talking about. It's yep. not that it's happening and people are outraged. It's that it's happening and people are going with their own children. Should we let little Timmy hear this? Are you mad? Are you mad? Try and put that anywhere near I love or I know or my kids. There's no question about what's going to happen. There's no way I would let that happen because it's totally perverse. It's abuse. It's yeah. abuse. But we're so numb now. We're such cucks to abuse. We don't even recognize abuse for being abuse. We just yeah. go, no, this is normal. This is how people talk. No, it isn't. It wasn't normal five years ago. I don't know why you dummies all think it's normal now. Yeah. But if you let it happen, it'll keep happening. It'll just keep well, happening. It, it reflects what you're saying about the it's always later than you think. The old saying, the Romans or whatever. It's like they have, they took over the schools, they took over the universities, they took over Hollywood, they took over most of the governments, they took over the militaries, they took over these institutions, these corporations, like everything, you know, almost everything in culture across the West in America and Canada and Britain and Australia and whatever, they took all this stuff over years ago. And now, you know, even decades ago, in some ways, it wasn't all at once, it was gradual, and then it picked up more steam, even more universities, even more people. The old guard retired. You had new these new woke people come in. And now this is the fruit of that. Like this is yeah. them. They took over. And now, so that's why five years ago, those symptoms, these expressions weren't showing just yet, but they were obviously about to on a timeline, yes. which is what we're seeing now. And yeah, they're coming out for the kids. All these crazy Christians from the 90s and 2000s saying that they're, it's a slippery slope. They're going to come after your kids and shit. Look, they were, I'm not a Christian, but these people are right. And credits do or credits do. These people are literally coming for your children and, and they're not going to, and they're not, and openly, and they're not going to stop. They're saying it. They're proud of it. We're coming for your yeah. kids. We're coming for you. Really, really mm -hmm. try, try me, bitch. Try me. They're so there's the a, kids. there's an internet meme that, uh, you know, I don't want to get too much into it, but I can outline the details of it. The basics, it's just an internet picture, you know, typical meme. And it's basically stating that like white people around the world are like very slow to act, but eventually they just snap and, things get fixed and you know that, that might be where that, this is going that that's what worries me mate so you and i you're you're further right than i am i've moved right from the left <laughs> towards the center in the last three years as many people on the left have because we're looking at the left and we're going well this doesn't represent my beliefs this doesn't represent my values to be clear my this is your right now your, this is your uh, characterization of my political philosophy not mine I don't, I don't really you're, call myself right, although I understand why you're saying that. I respect it. Look at you with your red cap on. <laughs> Make <laughs> men gun. alpha are again. Are you wearing a gun right now? <laughs> uh, I have two. I have that one and then the one in front of me too. Both are loaded. Now, what you're, I care about right. though, politically, I care about reality and I care about the founding yeah. fathers of, and the founding of America. Those are These are basically my political positions and where they come from. And Ayn Rand so, would be so, the reality part too. So you're, but you, would you agree you're right of center? I don't like the left right thing in general. I just care about what's real. I care about what's true and I care about what's objectively true. And that to you me is where political the, philosophy should come from. You know, where the, the y axis as well, like there's authoritarian and libertarian. Yeah. So you're, you're probably more towards individual responsibility and libertarianism. You're not a libert. I'm not saying you're a libertarian. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Between authoritarianism, you would choose libertarianism, right? Uh, uh, yeah, and I, and people would choose that for me, characterizing my statements. So I get why you're saying the right and libertarian thing. Yeah. It's just these yeah, things yeah. Don't, don't matter to me. And I think even if they're useful in conversations, and I get what people like to you know make these little maps of where people are politically and stuff, none of this yeah. matters to me. I don't call myself a conservative. Um, I will describe myself sometimes as like, well, number one, an objectivist, because philosophically that's true. 
or even like a Ron yeah. Paul Republican who was a hardcore libertarian in America. He was a yes. former libertarian yes. presidential candidate. What a shame he never got a chance. What a, what a world we'd live in now if he'd done if he'd done four years. Yeah, I know. Or eight. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, though, I don't want to get in the weeds on it. Go ahead with your yeah, former yeah. Uh, previous comments. King King Ron DeSantis, twenty twenty four, and I'm a yeah. lefty. Go on, so, sorry, yeah. man. <laughs> I'll move to Florida when it secedes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder what it is about Florida because Florida was my main experience of America growing up. Like, obviously, right. I traveled, I saw, you know, a number of the states, not all of them, not even close. There's 50, fucking 50 of them plus territories. But most of my experience of America growing up was Florida. And it was so weird for me in 2019 or 2020 to, I mean, obviously, I've been watching politics and landscape and the culture change all these years, and it's crazy. But to see in 2020 all these states like, all this insane kufid shit and lockdowns and all this crazy crap and then of course ron DeSantis doing his thing that to me was i mean the culture and the, the media anyway frame that as weird and he's the bad guy and whatever but to me yeah. that's just that's completely normal especially as a floridian like i grew up in in, in the wild like we grew up on the yeah. water playing with sharks alligators manatees dolphins giant uh jewfish groupers that weigh 500 pounds like we went, we would go to school sometimes and see a six foot monitor lizard looked like a fucking dragon just walking around. Like this is how I grew up. Like it was very wild snakes, like that could fucking kill you. And like Florida is a wild place. And that to me, yep. and there's so much freedom with that too, though. This state is very like, there's a reason Ron is our governor. That is the Florida man. That's that. Those are my people. Like America yep. is secondary to that to me. I'm a Floridian first. Yes. And, ran. I, and I, I understand that. I told you straight away when, when uh, the whole lockdown was happening and in order to get into America, I had to go to the Dominican Republic first and I flew into Miami to go see my sister in California. Yeah. I couldn't believe Miami. I was just amazed at the freedom there yeah. and the, the vibe that was there. And, oh, it was, I, I only had three days there and I was, I was devastated because it was so good. It was so, yeah. so good to be there. Um, Florida yeah, is heaven on no, I call I, it heaven on earth, man. It's it's that good. I've been I haven't traveled maybe as much as you, but I've I've seen a lot. And Florida is my favorite place in the world, man. Even more than Australia. Yeah. I mean, obviously the politics suck there, but a lot of beautiful yeah. places. But Florida is just fucking so savage and so beautiful too. Yeah, yeah. I would uh, if if it did secede and it was an option, I would definitely move there. I would definitely move. Yeah, my hope is that Florida is the future of America. As as grim as things look right now, not only in America but throughout the West. And Ron has been, our governor has been key in pushing things, uh, opening the Overton window for other governors to follow him because they're all beta males yeah. and pussies. You know, if, if yeah. it's not Trump and Ron DeSantis, they're pretty much all beta males and pussies. And a lot of them are frauds too. Yeah, I think um, we're, we're, we, are, we are back into back into politics again. But I've, I've been, ever, ever since I went there, I was like, well, who's, who's the governor of this? Who's, who's calling the shots here? And I've been following him ever since. I've been following Ron DeSantis ever since. And I'm very yeah. impressed. I'm very, very impressed with him. Did you see uh, the other day? He just passed a bill. He signed it into law in Florida. And now it's a program. And it's the first ever of its kind I've ever seen in America. It's a bill that, that puts $70 million towards fatherhood in Florida. Specifically fatherhood. That. The whole campaign right. is called Strong Fathers, Strong Florida. And it's all about helping How fathers. How aroused were you when you saw that? Oh, very. I'm like patriarchy is getting back in the game. I loved it. I mean, because I'm not I'm not necessarily a fan uh, from a political philosophy angle of that, but it doesn't matter to me because the situation is so dire. And if we have yes. any hope of restoring like good governance that's not corrupt and uh, aggressively advocates and protects individual rights and freedoms, it's going to come yeah. from fathers being strong fathers, leading their families, raising healthy children, look, not abusing look, we're them. Not, like, we're not, we're not going, we're, humanity's not going down the toilet. So it's not. So this is going to happen. So we can either have it, this is this is the point I was going to make before actually, and I got, I got waylaid. Okay. Um, we can either have it nicely. So people like Ron DeSantis can go, hey guys, we're going to, we're going to move now the other way and yeah. we're going to be sensible again. Or you can have nutters, total psychopaths who will really overcome you said white people will will say nothing and then snap yep that's what i'm scared of i would rather do the ron DeSantis thing of being like okay everybody let's just 
let's just move in the right direction. There's going to be a lot of hysteria. There's going to be a lot of screaming, a lot of complaining, and people with blue hair tearing their blue hair out and tearing their septum piercings out. We have to let that happen. Otherwise, if it gets bad, I would be, yeah, I, 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 I heard the implication of what you just said, and I'm very worried about that because the United Kingdom and America, I'll speak of the countries that I have an investment in and that I know well, are majority white countries. Yeah. And I, I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it at that. People can, you know, do their own mathematics inside their head. I'm not for war. I'm not for violence. I hate violence. I don't like conflict. I think we're all adults. This could be a beautiful world. It's the Garden of Eden. We've so much wonderful stuff here. We yeah. don't need to waste our time killing each other and gouging each other's eyes out when we could be dancing and fucking instead. Yeah, I'm all. I'm all about it, man. Yeah, and it's. Uh... Like you said, it's going to be a lot of hysteria, people pulling things, their hair out of their head and screaming. But that is a much better option. And I'd like to see that, too. But I'm OK with whatever happens at this point. I'm, I'm I have a preference for what happens, but I'm just kind of indifferent because uh, what matters to me is in, is human life. Number one, as, as a value, as a standard of value. Uh, that's where my philosophy morally comes from and philosophically is individual yeah. human life, first and foremost. And directly, just like the Declaration of Independence, how does it how does it state the rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Now, those are rights; those aren't values. That's there's different. There's a conceptual difference there, but freedom, individual freedom, follows that directly, and that's what these governments should protect: life, li the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And they need to do they need to do that, or we're going to make them do that. Like in my speech in 2021, for example, State of the Manosphere. I said something that people really loved and people were going to kind of hatred for. I said, you know, basically like I'm an American and you're going to leave me alone or I'm going to make you leave me alone. That's how this relationship is going to work going forward because it's an abusive relationship. And this is how you handle bullies. You're going to leave me alone or I'm going to make you leave me alone. There's, there's no I'm other, thinking, those I'm are, those of are your options. Snake with the logo, don't tread on me underneath it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Dude, my yeah, country no, was I, founded, like, I got, a, I got a lot of love for you, man, 100%. But you know, as well as I do, my country was founded shooting lobster backs, British people, killing them. We didn't talk, to, we tried talking to you, and we tried making you go away. <laughs> and then you didn't want to leave, so we just fucking started killing you. Like, Listen, that's that's you, the history of my country. And if you don't fucking sort your country out, we'll be back to take it over. Yeah. This, is, this is something I said to you a couple of years ago. I think the what I think it was during uh, the riots. I was like, the one thing America needs now is a good external enemy. And I think the Brits should do the right thing. Put the powdered wigs on, put the red coats on and go and invade <laughs> again. Just so you feel like a unified America all over again. <laughs> yep. Yep. But I think Florida, like I said, too, has a lot of this attitude, both politically, as you see, but also like as a, as a place and as a culture and a geography. And I actually think the geography is part of what, um, like I, I've written a little bit about this in blog posts and newsletters, but I really mean it, that the geography of Florida is like extra American. And that's why they call us, the, people, the meme in America is that Floridians are crazy. Like we're the crazy Floridians and whatever, right? The crazy Florida man. This is nonsense. We're just like more American than you. Now, Texans would probably disagree and they might get um, offensive, offended by that. I don't care. Good for them. They can go do their Texas thing. But uh, I love Florida is so savagely American. There's even I remember even in a TV show, you probably heard of it. Um, what is it? The Handmaid's Tale. That's like hyper ultra feminist show. It's hysterical. The first episode is amazing because it's like every feminist nightmare put into a TV show with a high production budget and value. It's amazing. And what's interesting is that the Florida uh, and America goes through some sort of civil war and new government takes over. And it's it's pretty well done anyway as a, as a show. But the Florida people, the Florida men are the last men to hold out in the civil war. They're literally, that's how they portray them. And that to me is so Florida. Now we would win, of course, we wouldn't lose like in the show, but spoiler alert. But it's, it's a very wild place. And my childhood, man, really, uh, I think it's part of what drives my... And I'm fortunate because I think this is how human beings everywhere should live, narcissistically, perhaps, right? Or some people might accuse me of anyway. But this 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 uh, push towards individual freedom, you know, minimal government. There was no government, you know, on the water in Florida. There's cops, but they're very very rare. There's like no. It's just very wild. Like you're very. You have to be very self responsible to take care of yourself on a boat, or you could I, die. I think like drown. I think I think we can assert that there's something natural and biological to that stance. It's like asserting that there's something natural and biological to humanity. We are most yeah. of us, the overwhelming majority, the product of heterosexual union, for example. 
Yeah. And when we were raised and weren't left to die out in the cold, it's because we had a mummy and a daddy that kept us fed. Maybe not you, maybe not me, but the gen most of the generations before. That unit does not need government intervention. That unit does not need authority figures filling in the gaps on their parenting or teaching their kids about sex or medicalizing their children because that's yeah. what the authority of the parents inside the nuclear family would do. So I think we can state that the type of thing you're talking about actually has what the Weinsteins maybe would say is there's a good evolutionary match or a poor evolutionary match. So there's a political system that's actually a good evolutionary match for the human animal that we are today. Yes. And that would include, yeah, absolutely, like a nuclear family. I think there's room for everybody in the world. If you're into this kink, that kink, this fringe, that fringe, I don't care. It's nothing to do with me. But the fact is the 8 billion of us are here 99.999% of us are here because of heterosexual union and we survived childhood because one or both parents had their shit together enough to keep feeding us and not to let us get run over or eaten by a fucking lion. End yeah. of. It's not that complicated, man. Yep. We'll put. Now, I want to actually, you know, get off politics because I think uh, both of us we have did, an we interest did 40, in We did 41 minutes there. Sorry, La. <laughs> Well, some of it was also about, uh, I mean, I look at your savagery and your, your increased uh, aggressiveness uh, and your personality. I love it. And I don't think that's entirely political. A lot of it, I think, is much more based in psychology and culture and th that that range of issues that you're focusing on, because you see also how they connect to these other domains. And I'm all about that. I think everything philosophically is connected, basically, whether it's more morality, epistemology, abusive relationships and how that affects your own personality and psychology metaphysics even, politics, art, right? Art, things like that. But I do want to move off it and talk about more CPTSD issues because a lot of the fans on my channel, they're not... Recently, we put out some videos of you that actually did really well. I appreciate you sharing them too. But that was one of the first times they'd seen a video of you on the channel, at least in a few months, you know, six months or something like that. And we're always growing, so I want to talk about that. So first of all, this is an ad I made for the chorus, which I love, and everyone loves it. <laughs> Um, so you didn't make this, but I made it and I think it, I think it, uh, is really funny and, and just wild. So it's, you know, it's alien putting, uh, her, you know, whatever the fuck that is on the alien Tongue, this... mouth demon animal through the back yeah. of a man's skull. Yeah. Yeah. Does this look like your last relationship? You're not alone. Richard Grant and CPTSD masterclass is here to help only at 21 university, but talk to me about. I mean, first of all, what do you think of this ad? Because I didn't get your approval for this. I just kind of did it. And I was like, he'll probably think this is fine. I, I'm so hopelessly addicted to narcissistic, psychopathic, predatory women that I think that alien goal looks kind of hot. I actually <laughs> probably, yeah, look at that. Look at the curve right there. I mean, oh, she's, she's sexy. Like they once. Sexy woman. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I'll hold that tail. Um, I think it's good. I think uh, one of the things, mate, is I think uh the comment before about me being a stuffy online uh therapist i mean i'm not a therapist i've never really been stuffy i've always made stupid jokes and, and whatever trying to keep things light with for people but i i, I understand that i've changed my style uh, a, a little bit as as i've grown as a as a man as a human being yeah and i like that because it's funny now most people think childhood trauma isn't funny or cptsd isn't funny but actually those of us who experience childhood trauma, those of us who have like CPTSD and some pretty serious psychological issues as a result of it, you yeah. were raised in chaos, I was raised in chaos. We have this kind of a sense of humor. And I think there's this sort of feeling like, no, you must, it's disrespectful. You have to be like this. Well, I, I just got my book done and they were doing the cover. And they said, what do you want on a cover? And I said, whatever you do, don't put a woman in a cardigan in a summer dress in a, in a field of wheat with a sunset and don't put the word journey in the fucking title. <laughs> make it dark. Make it look like a Stephen King thriller. Anything but that. You know, the flavor, it's so it's so bland and vanilla and neutral that everything yeah. in psychology and therapy should be. Why? You're not bland. You're not neutral. I'm not bland. I'm not neutral. Why do we yeah. have to take all the flavor and the funk out of everything because we're talking psychology and it's serious. Well, is it serious? I mean, yeah, life sucks. It fucking hurts. It always did. Life on earth is traumatic. It always was. If you go to any country where they've experienced serious trauma, like you go to the Balkans, their sense of humor is dark, man. The Russians, to too. Bosnia, the, the Russians, Russians yeah. too. 
you, yeah. you hear the jokes they tell about the siege of Sarajevo, and it's against themselves. This is Bosnians telling jokes against themselves. Well, it's, it's like, like the old. There's an old Russian joke, and it's well, at least a meme I've seen. It says dark humor for Russians is like food. You don't get any. You don't get it. <laughs> it's fucking nice. brutal. So, so I, I like I like the advert, and I think. Yeah. CPTSD is so rife now. Narcissistic, the abusive relationships are so rampant now. It's just out of control. We're really in a pandemic of that. Yeah. Like we've got to reach more people. And if everything is bland and dour and not funny and has no color, yeah. some people just won't even tune in, mate. You know yourself. They'll just be like, Ugh. you yeah. know, you will read the books. That's why I respect you is because when you say you read a book, you didn't just listen to it on an audio book for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. You mean you read the fucker from cover to cover. You've read more books on this than I have. And yeah. you read them quicker than I do. Paper, paper books, man, real books. Paper, book... real physical books. That a, you, a book that you book. Can hold a, and you can a book book. A book book. Double, double book. A book book. Yeah. A double book. So, so like, I, I just think for most people, though, they won't do that. And so, even as I'm moving forward, I'm going to try and use less technical language. Uh, apart from anything else, I don't think it actually massively helps people to hear a load of technical language, and it yeah. can turn a lot of people off. So that advert. I loved that. I thought it was really funny. Thanks, man. And I appreciate your sense of humor for it, too. And I, I do wonder if it's because we have our own traumatic histories that opened up the window for this kind of dark humor. But I do think yeah. it's healthy and that every whether or not you had a traumatic background as a, an emotionally mature adult, male or female, you should have a yeah. taste and a respect for variations of humor, whether it's a stand up yes. comic or talking about a serious issue. Um, yeah. you can go too far with it for sure, but that the range of not going too far is really wide. And these people, that, it, these, it, these stuffy, banal, uptight fucking wasps in America and around, I hate, I hate these people. Yeah, they're losers. They're, they are, whether conservative or liberal or whatever the fuck, like people, you know, yeah. I wrote a whole uh, newsletter yesterday that people loved. People are texting me about it on my phone. I know a newsletter is yeah. good or something or a video is good. Like I put out a view. When people text my personal cell phone, that's that is not even like widely known. I don't I don't put my cell phone right. number on fucking Twitter, right? People will text me, yeah. oh, I fucking loved your newsletter. I'm like, oh, great. And I, I <laughs> the whole newsletter was called conservatives or frauds. That was the subject right. line, right? And then I went into that and I ripped conservatives a new asshole. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, because a lot of them are just stuffy beta male frauds, and they're yeah. no better than the limousine liberals that they call hypocrites. It, yeah. It's they they pretend to. I mean, one of the things I pointed out is that, you know, I think liberals in America anyway, these limousine liberals, these these whatever, right? They're actually they are hypocrites, right? Like the right calls them out all the time, hypocrite, hypocrisy, oh, double standards, this and that, right? Well, that doesn't matter to them because they're actually more philosophically consistent because they don't pretend yeah. to care about hypocrisy. These motherfuckers do. These conservative beta males, you're right. a hypocrite. It's like, motherfucker, you're a hypocrite too, but you pretend to care about it, making you a double hypocrite. You're <laughs> double the fraud. They're fraud. They're fraud. You're right. They're hypocrite. And you're pretending yeah. to not be hypocrite because you're a fucking pussy and a beta male. And you're ideologically driven in ways that you're concealing, which makes me fucking hate you because you're a fraud and you're a piece of shit and you're anti-reality. I, I think, yeah, yeah, no, I, I think you're on the money there. So there's a couple of things. One is... There is no political side that owns this um, anti-reality element that's crept into everything. That's right. Where the, sto the story trumps the reality or the feeling trumps the data. It's that, 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 th we will not progress as a society. We're not going to fucking progress if we keep up with that. That cannot be hyper-normalized. That you're going you're gonna to put forward a story over reality or you're going to choose emotions over facts. Like There's no future in that. That, that is a society... That is a civilization in collapse, 100 percent. I will defend that statement to the death. That is that is an indication of a society in collapse. The second thing is the social media mindset. It's all about follows and likes. So, of course, then you're in training your brain to, to be like basically a, a, a panderer. We're all pandering. We're all fawning. Yeah. We're all codependent with our yes, audience. Yes. Just tell them what they like. A woman, a likes. woman. A woman and a birthing person. <laughs> but you're right. And I fucking hate that about that's this is one of the things I hate about social media in general is all the and I'm a, I'm not only against this, I what I try to do with my internet uh brands and personality or whatever you want to call it, whether it's the business one or the personal, and I do a couple, you know, both, 
I try to get people to hate me usually. Like how many, like fuck the likes and all this bullshit. I want the downvotes. Uh, if it's reality based and there's and there's a, a truth purpose to it. It's not, it's usually not just random, but this is why I make the memes that I do. I'm like, how, how, how aggressive and super intense can I make this meme while still respecting and advocating for the truth? How, how many times can I twist the knife in these people's heads to make them crazy? And I love it as long as it's true. With Jordan Peterson, it's been fucking wonderful. He has the biggest collection of codependent simps, these little codependent lobsters I've ever seen. So it's endlessly funny to me to make these people hate me because well, they are not reality. Well, it depends on what you mean focused. by codependency, Anthony. Depends yeah. what you mean. Depends about the metaphysical connection to the ontology, the tele teleology, the epistemology, the moral philosophy <laughs> of the lobsters and the dominance hierarchy. Don't you understand? What a post. <laughs> What a postmodernist. He, he socially deconstructs everything. Everything. He cannot answer the question, what's your favorite topping on pizza, without being like, well, it depends what you mean. By That's pure yeah. postmodernism. That's yeah. pure postmodernism. Yep. <laughs> it's not like he hasn't done you know, positive things uh, in culture. People misinterpret you know, my criticisms of him. I like a lot of his, uh, his former dunking well, he used to do on feminists and stuff. It's great. And, He's 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 yeah. great. Long may he continue. But Long he's but he's continue. but he's lost. He's not he's God. Lost. Yeah, he's yeah. not God. And I, I think he's very lost. I think he's a man who's he basically just constantly, like you're saying, you know, over deconstructs things, but he also just constantly regurgitates what other people believe. And he has no he yeah. even talks about I've said there's a few videos where you can see him say this and his fans will know it. He's like, you know, my philosophy, if there is one, and it's like, no, you clearly don't have your own philosophy. You just regurgitate what a thousand other philosophers have said, and you don't distill it into your own original thinking, or very rarely do you do that. You're always leaning on these other people. You don't think for yourself and you can't articulate it from an original position. He's he's someone who's read too much and knows too little. I, I think I think like uh as 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 far as that goes, there's a very I mean, if if you go down this route, you'll have Jordan Petersonites jumping up and down all over you with as much vehemence as any radical leftist uh, feminist now mm, completely I, I hysterical i feed off of the hate i love it you know <laughs> but but there does have to be a conversation <sighs> just just well in my personal opinion we say okay what what does this man actually believe mm -hmm. or is he very cleverly making good assessments about what people need to hear at a certain moment in time because that's not useless that's not a useless ability to be like wow what does the culture really need what you know he was a university professor he's surrounded by young male students who are completely lost and depressed and he was like well they probably need some order and a burden and a responsibility and, and he got it right that's actually correct clean your that room clean your clean room your damn room that doesn't mean the same yeah. dude then has the solution just because he's ascertained what the problem is very often the people who are good at ascertaining what the problems are are not the same people who provide us with the solutions that's not how culture is, has worked for millennia some people are problem spotters some people are solution givers it's like um the difference between him and slaboy zizek though is zizek knows this zizek knows that he's not a provider of solutions and he'll openly say look i'm a philosopher i'm not here to give you answers i'm here to help you construct better questions yeah. Peterson is a little more in love with his own image and he's like well yep. yes I can tell you the truth as well and it and then at that point it seems to go vague in a vague way it leans very biblical it becomes very judeo-christian and I'm not I'm not for or against that I'm just like but why why that why yeah. isn't it and Rand as you say or or Buddhism or, or Hinduism know, so, Brahma so, or like, yeah, yeah right why not and yep. it, it does feel sometimes like a bit of a reach. He, he, he knows what the problem is, doesn't really know what the solution is. But instead of having the humility to go, well, I don't really know, he'll just say, this is this is the light, the truth, and the way. When I think, yep. based on his own life and how old he was when he you know got back involved in, in drugs and he's clearly struggling with, with depression, maybe yep. just lean out. We don't need you to be that, JP. We, we're cool with you just being a philosopher and just... It's. I think the criticism comes when you start pretending you can do things and you have answers that you don't have. That that's a problem. Yeah, I want to uh, upload an image real quick to review uh, the Peterson fiasco. One moment. Technical difficulties, fam.
Where is this? He didn't oh, here just it is. randomly get addicted to painkillers, by the way, folks. That's that's not true. Yeah, he's a beta male drug addict, is what I call him. Anyway, he, he, uh, was, he was he was deliberately mixing Adderall and painkillers. Go go ahead, sorry. Do, oh, do you see this nice. image loaded up? <laughs> Why are you so mean? Why are you so mean? <laughs> Dude, the photo. No, no. Look, the beta male stamp on his forehead. I did that. We did that. I had my guy do yeah, that. Yeah. But the, the makeup is real. I didn't do that. That's a real photo that Michaela posted of her father in drag makeup. And then this is Michaela. We put the pink hat on her. That's it, though. The rest of that is a. <laughs> that's not Photoshop. That's a real baby. That's her baby, Jordan's grandbaby, on the bed, on the floor, in the background, with her half naked, eighty percent naked mother in front of her with a camel toe. I mean, this Did is she post this... this on Instagram. Yes, she ended up taking it down, and her dad liked it. The the real photo her you dad... can see he he liked it. <laughs> I'm like, this is it. this is your daughter Jesus and your Christ. granddaughter. Like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> This is a dude. Look, look, man. I went to college, you know, like you did a long time ago. And if a girl has a bed on the floor, doesn't even have a box spring. I mean, it's literally just a mattress on the ground. That's a major ho hoage, man. That's some garden tool extraordinaire shit going on there. Are you kidding me? I mean, and then posting like naked like this, like, dude, this is not. And this is this is these are the people. These were the conservatives. You know, they're not technically conservative. At least Jordan's not right. He he claims he's not. Yeah. Um, different. He, he claims to be liberal, you know, and he's kind of like, yeah. he used to work for the UN. He admitted that recently on Twitter, uh, yeah. which is a globalist feminist shithole of an organization. But these are, these are the people that conservatives <laughs> are their heroes, right? Oh, these are my heroes based, based Jordan Peterson in drag makeup. Really? This is your base fucking truth teller. Who, you know what he struggles with most? I found videos where in as recently as like 2020, they ask him on these big TV shows and stuff. You know, what What rule do you struggle with most from the, the 12 rules to life and whatever, right? The first yeah. book. And he goes immediately, he jumps to telling the truth. That's what he struggles with. Telling He goes, telling, telling the truth, honesty, or, or at least be, at least don't be dishonest or something. It's like, dude, <laughs> you're a public fucking intellectual. And the number one thing you struggle with at 60 years old is telling the truth. What the fuck have you been doing for the past 60 years, man? Do you, this, this should be the easiest thing for you to do is tell the fucking <laughs> truth. That's your fucking job. This is like a plumber who's like, you know, I struggle with most is indoor plumbing. Like, and this is the daughter he raises, man. This is what's going to happen to the granddaughter. Is anybody thinking 20 years from now what that baby is going to be doing? I feel bad. It's a funny situation, but it, I feel bad for the kid. Look how the daughter turned out. How's the daughter, granddaughter going to turn out? This is a disaster. <laughs> This is no longer an interview. I'm just an audience member to the roast of Jordan Peterson by Anthony Johnson. <laughs> okay, no. You were, look, you made the first. I pinned your comment on that video. I loved it because I, I love. Got, I was like, here uh, comes Richard Granin jumping in with the with the whiplash. There's a there's a whole there's a whole uh, there's a whole stand up bit there that you could do. Oh yeah, my right. whiplash thing was uh, him yeah. saying, "Just get the damn vaccine." And uh, what what did he say? Suspend judgment. For six months so turn off your critical thinking suspend judgment for six months get the damn vaccine and then six months later he was like captain libertarian savior of the american truckers come yeah. on man come yeah. on he's get a flip-flopper like... he's a flip-flopper he's a politician basically <laughs> yeah that was too too much for me too and then the people in your comments were like no he never said that i posted a video of him saying it and they went okay he said it but he didn't mean it so, okay. yep yeah. All right. <laughs> no, they're they're people. Jordan is not. I want to make it clear that in my criticisms of Jordan, and I think you would agree. I think you would agree anyway. I've never got the sense that he's malevolent or malicious. He's not that kind of. Uh, so I'll call him like a beta male fraud and stuff, but I don't mean it in any kind of like uh, predatory way. Even though his fans are codependent, and there's a lot of. To me, it's this giant disaster of codependent lobster simps, and that's a thing. But. He's different from someone like a Rolo Tomasi, who I think is much more malevolent and predatory no, and stuff. It's, yeah, it's different. That's Jordan different. is a bumbling uh, kind of buffoon. I, th I think uh, uh, that's what I was going to say. When you said malevolent, the adjective that came to my mind is no preposterous. Like hmm. his, his posturing on some things is, is <clears throat> frankly preposterous, but it's not. This is a guy who's lived a fairly privileged life. I mean, it's hard for us. You're an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. The academic world is... A, you know it's a soft and gentle 
uh, insulated and insular place. A lot of respect is afforded to professors. And he's a public intellectual and he's a writer. So he's not, this is not, a, nobody's claiming this is a dude with edge or, well, sorry, some people do because they're, they're completely brainwashed, but he's not, an, he's not, he's not an experienced guy. He's not a worldly man. And this is when he talks about women and he talks about uh, relationships and his wife and his daughter, you get that sense. Like he's not a very worldly guy. He's been in the system since he was 20 and now he's 60. So it's 40 years. Like he's been in that system for as long, nearly as long as I've been alive, or, or, you know, so it's a, uh, it makes sense to me that he's a little bit that way, but no, malevolent. No, I don't think he's malevolent at all. And, and yeah, I don't, I don't all either. of our criticism and roasting of him should stop at the point where people think we're saying, no, he's a bad person. No, but if you follow him blindly, there will be bad consequences for you. Absolutely. Yes, yes. I agree hundred percent, particularly in the last part with the blindly people accuse me yeah. sometimes of saying like, uh, I'll criticize Jordan or I'll criticize Christianity or some other religion and like, oh, you want you want me to follow you blindly? I'm like, no, you've actually missed the entire fucking point. Not only do I not want you to follow me blindly, I really mean that. It's not a LARP. It's not because some people say it like the fraud father. They'll say these things yeah. like, oh, I want you to be free. And they don't really mean it. It's a way to rope people in. It's bait and switch. I really mean yeah. this a, a hundred thousand million percent. And if you follow me blindly, I'm going to make fun of you. That's how far I'll take this. I will personally <laughs> roast your ass. Because not you're only... Not only will I not be your cult leader, I'm going to fucking mock you for being an idiot whilst you yes. do it. <laughs> you because you've completely missed the point of everything that I've ever said and everything right. I've ever done through my work with 21 Convention and 21 Studios and the Redman Group. Yeah. I really want you to think for yourself and lead your own life and make your own decisions and trust your own judgment. And if you don't do that, you're a fucking idiot and I'm going to make fun of you. I'm going to screenshot it and roast your ass and use you as cannon fodder to make you cry until you fucking listen. This is what men used to do, ladies and gentlemen. This was what we were normally allowed to do before it became politically incorrect. And this is how men corrected other men through mockery, through mockery. When you do when you're in like worlds like little enclosures of masculinity, like boxing, MMA, nightclub security, I guess inside the manosphere as well, you still see it. But it's a dying art form. What a wonderful way to regulate each other's behavior. Yeah. <laughs> and so ask each other to do better. We just need to do better. Yeah, we do need to do better. We need to make fun of more beta mouse in France. <laughs> uh, yeah, my newsletter I wrote yesterday too, I talked about um, in relation to this cracking skulls in the manosphere since 2019, where I became much more public about opposition to frauds and predation. You know, there's in the manosphere community and industry, manosphere Inc., I call it now, like conservative Inc., uh, there's, a, there's a grassroots side and there's a commercial side. And that's always been the case. But I think the commercial side has gotten increasingly predatory and, and malicious in some ways in the past five to six years, something like that. And I'm not and, okay with it. And I want it to end. And yeah. I'm going to stop it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think it's a just cause. I think it's a just cause because where the, you have people who are predators who are saying they care about men, you actually care about men. Yes. And a lot of men, won't. they won't see that. All they'll see is like you're roasting their heroes and then they'll hate you for it. And yeah. they're not they're not going that one logical step next, which is to say, well, why is this guy doing this? Yep. Anthony's the one who cares about men. He doesn't want you to be a cult. Oh, so I should I should attach my umbilical cord to to Anthony. No, that's no. not gonna work either. Yeah. Precious. You have to stand up on your own two fucking feet. And a lot of people are so resistant to that. That they're, they're you know, I, I've accepted that there's a ton of people who are just never gonna get that. And yeah. I'm not I'm not I'm not on a mission. I'm just like, get it, don't get it, you know, whatever, man. It's 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 up to everybody to figure it out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and there's just so many people that you're at like that won't get it, but you just have to say it anyway. Like I know when I do when I roast their hero, there's just gonna be so much backlash. Uh even in the most overwhelming case with evidence, if I do a documentary, like a really I go above and beyond, you're still gonna have twenty percent minimum of people. Minimum. That's what that's when you succeed. Yeah. That's when you knock it out of the park. You still have twenty percent who are just absolutely attached at the like an umbilical cord to this individual because that person and I, I have some empathy in a way or at least understanding that they are attached to that that individual psychologically, almost yes. like in a in a survival way. Like this is their father yes. I'm attacking. My, I might as well be attacking yes, their absolutely. own mother and father, right? Yes, you are. You are in effect, and I think your analysis is exactly correct. That's the correct way to. 
understand the vociferousness of the of the defenses these people have attached to their gurus as uh, uh, primary objects as primary caretakers literal yes. mothers and, and, and fathers yep. and there is a, a survival element to that you kill my dad you're kind of killing me they're also yep. heavily heavily dependent social media and internet users these are the people who'll be using their phones and their internet 10 12 hours a day and so they're very dependent on that external figure to regulate their own emotions yes. so you attacking them really is a threat it really really is going to damage the quality of their lives to you you're thinking well what difference does it fucking make just get on with your day go yeah. go to work it should you should be thinking about this for no more than 15 mm -hmm. minutes but for some people it actually does ruin their day because they're that fragile and that dependent yeah and i go after them too i mean the memes i make as you know are really intense <laughs> i just don't stop and then uh this is a great one too i mean i'll literally take someone's father figure um let me pull it up and you know i'll behead them or i'll have someone else behead them or where's my favorite one? Hang on a second. Uh, I know your, your fans will see this and they'll find this very interesting. Fuck, where'd it go? Oh, I turned him into the Crypt Keeper. You know, it's a good one. But hang on a second. Who, who was who did Abram preach behead on that last one? I didn't. I couldn't see that because the sun was in oh, my head. Oh, we oh we did that one for sure. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, no, was it okay? Was that them beheading somebody or was that them being beheaded? That was them beheading uh, Fresh and Fit, uh, one of the guys. Oh, Fat and Fish. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Oh, this one is of me. This is where I behead uh, the Conovan, I call him, Donna, Donna Shart. Uh, okay. This is a great. So I, I, this is someone, this is for a lot of guys. This is, he's not as a high level as the Fraud Father, but he was like an underboss to the Fraud Father. And I just behead this guy on a meme. And I did that with the Fraud Father as well. I just, I just have no, uh, there's just no when I when I see that this is gonna be true and it's gonna like rile these people up and it's gonna really mess with them, I'm just like go for it to my guy who made I don't make all these. This one I can't make. If it's really good artistically, I didn't make it. So these ones are above and beyond. Don't you understand politics, Anthony? You gotta politic your way around and make your money and you know. <laughs> oh, well, I understand well. politics. I'm like a bull in a china shop, I'm like a bulldozer. I'm like, just destroy them. <laughs> This is Florida man politics. <laughs> yes. Trump is two, too nice. Two glocks, Trump is two glocks blazing. Yeah. Trump is too nice, man. I mean, Trump at his meanest is where he needs to be at like all the time, in my view. And it's where he should have been and where he should go back to. And Ron DeSantis, you know, I love him, but I hope that like me and you, that as, as he ages and matures and continues his growth as a human being and a leader, that he will get more and more savage and more and more intense to the extent that it's useful. If it becomes counterproductive, of course, cut back on it. But I think there's a lot of room for him to grow there, and that he will, and that he has. There is. He's he's still young. He's three years younger than me, mate. He's he's uh wow. he's he's, for, he's forty one. He's forty one. Yeah, he will. He's he's he'll it'll come. It's gonna come. I, I, it will come commensurate with the environment because this isn't over. The environment's gonna get uh, crazier and crazier and crazier. And as that happens, the support for a stronger and stronger message will come. I just want to reiterate i don't want the i don't want there to be a heavy harsh backlash to this i'd like a nice smooth ish transition back to sanity and back to reality yeah i would like that too so i want to talk more about uh cptsd in particular because as much as it's a basic you know fodder for you at this point a lot of my fans at 21 studios don't know what that is they've seen bits and pieces of it in videos i put out but to me it's probably the most useful concept that created in the past several decades in psychology to actually help yes. people understand their trauma and help people heal. Yes. And this is the yes. book, Complex PTSD, that you reference a lot. Complex yes. PTSD from Surviving to Thriving by Mr. Pete Walker. Some people accuse you, dude, it's so funny putting out your videos and then you share them because people who hate follow you, they don't like you, they just follow you because they hate you or whatever, right? Yes. They come on my channel then and they drop the nastiest fucking comments about you like they do about me on my channel. I'm almost cracking up. I'm like, this is, he must have this on his own channel a lot. But can you talk to me about the haters as well as complex PTSD and why this is mentioned? I don't, understand I, this. I don't, I don't know why anybody, do, do people say that they hate Pete Walker or? or they say they, they say that you're stealing from him. And I'm like, he's not stealing from him. He gives him due oh, credit on a frequent a, occasion. I, yeah, no, I have a, I have a relationship with, with Pete Walker. I mean, we email each other. He's, he's just written a, <laughs> uh what do you call it like a blurb for my book uh that's coming out 
Um, no, and he's wow. referenced in the book. I reference you. You can't you can't drive somebody's book sales as much as I have in Europe and then turn around and say no, you're a thief. That's that's insane. Yeah. Um, but they I also accuse you. Material? They also yeah. accuse you though. They're like Richard's a narcissistic psychopath. Like they're like he is the narcissist. I'm like no, you people are stupid. I'm sure, Rich. I'm sure these are questions you probably contemplate. Um, I know I have, and I think everybody as a public figure, anybody who's attracted a lot of attention and hate and vitriol and support, you consider these things. But I've I've met you, and I know you, and you're not. These 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 comments are delusional, but they're funny because they're so wrong. Well, there's there's a, there's two there's two factors. I think that it's it's not very politically correct to talk about it, but. There's a couple of factors that drive this kind of thing. Um, the, the most charitable way I could put it is some people are too stupid to understand these personality disorders. With, I don't know another way of saying they don't have the intellectual software or hardware to get their heads around it. It's it's way more complicated than people would like it to be. And the accusation, oh, he's a narcissist, oh, she's a psychopath is like for for dumb people or or maybe not even dumb but like of middling intelligence they kind of go yeah i know what it is and you go okay what are the nine traits from the dsm of narcissism i don't need to read that well then how do you, how are you going to tell me you know what it is well i don't believe in psychiatry so why the fuck are you using a psychiatric term dumbass do okay. something else so people want the uh, quick cheap authority of of a complicated nuanced uh, a psychiatric model for what is essentially a defense mechanism to PTSD, but they don't want to have to bother their asses to read what it means. They just want to say it. Yep. So there's an IQ issue sometimes. And the second factor is some of the people who you run into online are seriously mentally ill. I mean, some of yep. them are in and out of institutions. They're on very uh, powerful psychotic drugs. And I think the right way to approach this is to be uh, compassionate to a degree, but also very boundaried. So I'd, anything like that, I would just block, just delete it, block it. You know, I have followers who will then fight with these people online. And I'm like, what are you doing? There's no good outcome here. The, the, like the person you're talking to is not going to go, you know what? You're right. I'm yep. being unfair. I'm being, no, that's never going to happen. Don't ruin your day. Just like delete it, block it, or unfollow the person or, or, or whatever it is. But yeah, the the that book, and the CPTSD model is has been a watershed moment in my understanding of psychology, the same as you. It's yep. a re originally, CPTSD is originally Judith Herman's model. She came up with it in 1992, particularly when she was, uh, I think she was comparing the effects on combat veterans and uh, children who were raised in abusive environments and found that there were some overlaps. Very, very uh, useful view. If I could break it down into something that is unpardonably brutally simple, it would be something like this. When there is PTSD, we have a singular event or events. And largely speaking, the client can remember the event. They're like, I feel fear when I drive the car because I got carjacked. So you go, OK, you remember the event. You have visual memories. You have olfactory memories. You have kinesthetic memories, auditory memories, and the trigger is something specific that relates to the event. And then we have a predictable emotional response, and we can say that the person can flashback. So a veteran flashbacking, a PTSD flashback, is I was attacked inside of a white van, and then every time I see a white van, I relive. I go through that memory really, really quickly and relive those same emotions. That's PTSD. This is really rough, and I apologize, but this is this is the, probably a good uh, uh, grounding for understanding it. Complex post-traumatic stress is complex in the trigger, in the traumatization, and in the recollection. All these things are complex as opposed to PTSD, which is moderately simple. So what does it require to have complex PTSD? Usually you need to be in a situation you can't escape. It goes on for a, a long period of time so that it can have a chance to really uh, uh, lay down new neural pathways and, and effectively change the brain and change the physiology. You cannot be able to escape. You can't fight your way out of it. You can't run your way out of it. You're stuck. You mean like brainwashing? Or, you're, you're getting kind of warped. Yeah. Or pretty it much. Can be. It's, it's it can a, be. Yeah, it can be. Well, <clears throat> even if there's no intention to brainwash you, CPTSD always brainwashes you, actually. You're right with what you said. Even if there's not a person there 
to brainwash you. Like the environment could give you CPTSD. Like if you if it was the end of the world and you were trapped in the remnants of Miami having to forage for food and fighting off wild alligators, that would give you CPTSD and you'd be brainwashed by that experience. But nobody's there to, to brainwash you as, as such. So the, 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 the trauma is multiple. There's multiple ongoing traumas. And that's traumas because, and hard to... if on. I can uh, interject, and that's yeah. because your brain is and your body are trying to adapt to keep you alive, to survive. It's, you're trying to survive a complex, traumatic, dangerous situation. At least your brain interprets it as dangerous. And if you don't yes. adapt and survive, you're going to die. Or you think you're going to die. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that that's essential. So the... <laughs> The, the force to adaptation to stress is essential and the fear of death is, is, is pretty much essential. So war veterans, political prisoners, and you say, well, do the victims of childhood abuse fear death? Yes, even if the parent is not threatening to kill them because we as children are so dependent on parents and adults, if they attack us, we think we might die. And the yeah. adrenal hormonal response is the same. So yeah, you're right with what you say. Well, it's also super the confusing because your parents are supposed to protect you. So now you're creating, yes. the, um, there's a couple of books I've read that talk about the split this creates in your mind. And that's why maybe this is possibly where things like bipolar disorder come from and more specific yeah. issues where you're, you're emotionally dysregulated and you swing back and forth because your parents would swing from protecting you to assaulting you. And that was my experience, 100%. Um, as yes. you know, we yeah. talked about my history. Like It's wild. Which is, which is a classic scenario for creating CPTSD and PTSD. CPTSD typically goes hand in hand with PTSD and vice versa. You very rarely find them to be completely separate. We're talking about mm -hmm. people who've been raised or, or been stuck in environments that have been very, very painful. There's multiple triggers. There's multiple reactions. With complex PTSD versus PTSD, Typically, we would diagnose CPTSD, not PTSD, if the client can't recollect the traumatic incident. So there's no, there's no uh, moment of, oh, I was attacked in a, a white van on a Monday morning on my way to work. It's an ongoing series of humiliations and boundary breaks and, uh, and uh, terror inductions and so on and so forth that you, you have no one specific incident that you can remember. So when you flashback, instead of reliving the time you were attacked in the white van, there's no visual auditory memory there. There's just the feeling, the somatic feeling in the body of being terrified, of being helpless, and all of the emotions that would go with that, perhaps rage, perhaps sadness, perhaps guilt or, or whatever. And so that's the complex side of it. It was induced in a complex way and it's experienced in a complex way and doing therapy for it is 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 pretty hard as well it's pretty it's, it's quite a bit more complex than uh, uh ptsd because even identifying where the trauma is is a lot harder a very very crude way of of comparing it would be like to say look at the damage done to a body by like a a single round a high caliber round versus a couple of shotgun blasts you yeah. now have pieces of shrapnel that have spun through the uh, the soft tissue in multiple directions at, at the same time. Digging that out is going to be a little bit more complicated. Yeah, hundred percent, man. We'll put we'll put. I wanted to show off another book as well. The body keeps the score. This is a book written by a psychiatrist. There you go, Bessel van der Kolk, MD. He lives in America, right. but I think he's German or something. Uh, great book, should, and he actually talks about should, the history. It should be Dutch. Should be Dutch with a name like that. He might like be Dutch. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's another book that uh, he does mention CPTSD. Well, number one is this is a great book in general for understanding trauma and healing from it. It's a very helpful book. But also he talks about the history of CPTSD. And he actually was one of the ones who tried um, at least once, maybe twice, to get it put in the DSM. And he ran into a lot of uh, basically corruption and bureaucracy that wanted to stop that. Because uh, it does need to be added. It's like PTSD was eventually added. That took a long time. Yes. It was controversial. But I think it's a, for example, too, I don't know if you agree with this, but I think CPTSD, it's really moved me away from using uh, the cluster B spectrum to describe people and abusers yes. and realize that these people also have CPTSD that not only is not healed and not resolved or was never resolved mostly or completely, but it's spun into specific behavior patterns that are abusive that we can then, if you want, uh, for insurance purposes or 
your own insult purposes or whatever. You can throw these at people, psychopath, narcissist, sociopath, histrionic, HPD, like all this crap. But really, you know, my ex-wife was a famous example. There's a viral speech on it, Medusa. But look, and I was very much in the pro CPT or uh, pro cluster B category intellectually back then when I was studying psychology. That was like the first time I really cared about it because it was like, and now it was an issue that affected my life so directly. I was like, holy fuck. And uh, it, it led to a whole awakening too, looking, that's how I found you eventually. But anyway, CPTSD is a much more uh, realistic model, I think, of looking even at the nastiest of people that are abusive assholes. <laughs> it's like, all right, this person was probably traumatized, didn't heal from it. And that is now a lifelong pattern that they just chose not to heal and they probably never will. But at least you can understand that, that someone you know was involved with that too. This doesn't mean they're not responsible for it though. No, well, that, 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 I mean, that's a, that's a whole topic there. Whereas our yeah. moral responsibility when it comes to mental health issues. And I, I'm in the camp that says having a mental health issue doesn't absolve you of moral responsibility very yeah. rarely, extremely yeah. rarely. Um, and that's, we, we won't get sidetracked back into the political debate again, but that is part of the left-wing ideology that infects psychotherapy is yeah. there is a lot of absolution of guilt that goes on that, sh that shouldn't go on. There's a lot of dodging of responsibility that goes on that, that shouldn't go on. It's just not justified. Everybody has mental health issues. That doesn't mean you go around killing people or assaulting them or raping yeah. them or stealing from them. Um, the, what you've just said is what Sam Vaknin, Professor Sam Vaknin is now talking about. And this guy is a diagnosed psychopath, as you know, diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder, has written uh, best-selling books on the subject of narcissistic personality disorder, plus released multiple papers. And he's saying that, that it's a response to PTSD. It's a response to CPTSD and that that is how it should be understood. And according to uh, some conversations I had with him recently in Prague, he said that actually there is a movement within mainstream psychology that's moving in that direction that would mean that yes the whole view of personality disorders would change the whole view of mental health would change and if cptsd was accepted more broadly into the mainstream we would have a much more nuanced view yeah. of what these things are and a much better chance of treating them than we do now like i think sean i think sean smith a friend of ours you know dr sean smith psychologist so, if i'm if i can paraphrase him 100 percent agree if I'm paraphrasing correctly, um, basically he thinks that, you know, cluster B disorders and stuff, a lot of the personality disorders in general, a lot of it's very cartoonish and it's insurance driven basically. And CPTSD, I don't know if you'd agree with this specific part, but I think CPTSD is a much more realistic model. Like you're saying nuanced for understanding people and personality disorders. It's like, all right, well, you think you want to put an acronym on them. Good for you. HPD or BPD. It's like, what that really means is they had, you know, someone fucking molested them for fucking five years as a kid and they never healed that and now they're hypersexual or whatever yeah yeah no i i, I agree with them 100 percent with that one i think i think and and it it's it's it, it's not mainstream psychology but many psychologists many mainstream academic psychologists even though it's not the consensus view would agree exactly with that which is that it's a criticism that's more often made of borderline personality disorder as a diagnosis than narcissism, which is like there's something cartoonish about this. There's something yeah. uh, it, it's almost it's almost more stigma than diagnosis at this point. And really, borderline personality disorder is that one disorder beyond narcissism, even where we really have to ask very hard questions about the discrete boundary between CPTSD and this thing that we call BPD, because mm. they are so similar. And they overlap in so many uh, critical and crucial ways. Uh, again, would be a driving force. I know that Judith Herman is pushing for it as well. She wants to change. She wants to integrate CPTSD back into the borderline personality disorder diagnosis and call it emotional dysregulation. But to mm. the broader point that you made, yeah, there's something cartoonish about all of this. I've always said that about narcissism and the way people talk about narcissism. Yeah. It's when it's spoken about online, particularly, I can't help but think of Christian Bale playing either Bruce Wayne or Patrick Bateman driving around in a tuxedo, snorting cocaine in a red sports car, killing prostitutes with a chainsaw. There's something, there's something film-like. It's a trope. It's a cliche. Yeah. Not saying that there aren't bad people out there. I, I, there's terrible, terrible human evil exists. Wow. What a, what a claim. But the way it's described is kind of goofy. It's, it's yeah. a little goofy and it's a little bit, 
over the top and at some point you have to say well is this diagnosis helping us is it helping the client is it helping the clinician or is it actually boxing us in and i think that's where uh to to echo sean smith's point that you just uh, told me there cptsd is just a much more adult and nuanced view of these things yeah yeah and it helps people realize too that they're not crazy that like childhood trauma is a serious issue and I think yeah. you mentioned Hollywood, you know, we're talking about, you know, they cartoonize it and it's kind of ridiculous. But I think one of the downsides to that is that people don't take, I didn't for sure, as a, particularly for men, they don't take childhood trauma seriously. And yeah. it took it took a very traumatic experience in my life in my 20s with the you know relationship uh, catastrophe, which was a world shattering event, um, as Sean would call it, that woke me up to you know, things about male female relationships, the red pill, but also uh, psychopathology. And then even yeah. my own, like, what did I need to heal and look into? Who did I need to study? Richard Grant and Pete Walker, uh, Bessel van der Kolk, Sean Smith, all these people, all of you guys. I, I, not, I love that you, really... that you put my name in amongst those. That's great. Always do yeah. that. Always. Yeah. These guys are all, they're, right, they're like PhDs <clears throat> or MDs. <laughs> yeah. You're doing something that they're not, though. You're popularizing it and communicating it to a huge mass of people when they don't have it takes a specific kind of personality and charisma to do that and you have that and i don't in some ways they do like sean has succeeded on youtube to some degree speeches he's given it i won't mention his own channel and podcast but he's primarily a clinical psychologist he practices this stuff in real life and that's where most of his time and attention goes and then speaking and being an author this is secondary to him with pete walker i imagine it's pretty similar he tries to write books he was he does or did clinical practice but he's not a, you know, no homo, but, you know, a young, funny, attractive psycho uh, YouTube personality that can communicate effectively to a lot of women and a lot of men. And you're across, um, I don't know how much the political spectrum, but you seem to be able to um, communicate effectively to a lot of different people, even they, when they disagree with you about different pol political issues and cultural issues. And then male, female, like you're kick you kick ass at 21 convention, even though your own audience is mostly women. People on our channel love you and we put videos out, the men. So not to blow too much smoke up your ass, but you do a really good job at things that they're not and that they probably can't or would have a really difficult time doing. It's not worth it for them to do it. You need to do it. I, I, pre I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And uh, no, it's, it's it's very kind of you. It, 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 it is it is because I, I can't really understand it because I'm, I'm me, I'm in it. So I'm like, yeah. I don't I don't really... I, Jordan Jordan well, Peterson so wishes it, wishes he was you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends what you mean by wishes, really. I don't know. No, I I I, uh, I appreciate that. And yeah, there is, you know, there has to be value in making things understandable, and there has to be value yeah. in making things approachable, because otherwise you've got the the tools exist. It would be like having a weapon and not being able to use it because you didn't know that you had the weapon there. So yeah, I I, yeah. I get that. I the humor that. too, is, like we can't expect yeah. Pete Walker to post alien memes about relationships. No. It's not going to happen, but I can do it and you can do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's that's okay. So, that's okay. Poor, yeah. poor Pete Walker. He must watch some of my videos and be like, fucking hell, this idiot is, <laughs> is talking about me and my books all the time. And he says the crazy, he's always telling cock jokes. <laughs> now, let me, I'll say this too, though. I know Sean Smith has openly um, praised you as well. That he really likes what you're doing on YouTube and in your own line of work as an entrepreneur. Like you, he recognizes, I think, similar to what I just said, that you're doing something really important um, in ways that I can't even do. I don't have the particular personality and charisma you do, nor the expertise and focus that you do on this stuff. I, I find men like you, obviously, to do that. But you're really doing a good job at it, and you're one of the best easily on YouTube doing it. Way better than Jordan Peterson. I mean, obviously, I've, I've made fun of him a lot. But I, I mean that. I'm not kidding. As much as I'm teasing about... And I like, you know, joking about him and roasting him. I really think that his lobster back codependence, what they think Jordan Peterson is doing, he's not doing. And men like you are, who do have a substantial audience of 300 something thousand and reach millions, but not at the extraordinary level Jordan Peterson's reached in terms of uh, metrics and data or people, number of people. You're doing what right. they think he's doing. He's not really doing it. You are. You're the, you're the savage, man. And our world, our clown world, though, doesn't like that. They want to elevate the wrong people to positions of authority and popularity because there's a lot of stupid sheep and they don't want to hear the truth. A lot of them, they think they do, but really they want like the illusion of truth. They want to like, they want to, they want to feel that they're right. They don't want to necessarily be 
uh, focused on reality and the truth. They just want the illusion of that. And as long as they feel that emotionally, then they're just not going to give a shit. And I think that's where that that's where the simps get so mad when I when I expose that there's something off about Jordan Peterson, the honesty or the the his lack of real wisdom. He's just kind of you know a repeater, like a broken record, repeating other people. Like he doesn't have his own. I don't get too deep on the woods in him again and the in the weeds. But you're doing what he's what he's not, and these lobster back codependents think he's doing. And if they went on your channel, for example, any Jordan Peterson fan watching this and watch your videos, they would get very angry because you would reveal the truth to them, which is going to make them angry, not happy. Maybe long term, it'll make them happy. It, it most certainly, I think, will long term, but it'll make it'll trigger the shit out of them and rant. That's, uh, yeah, it's good. I, I think it's very interesting what you just said. It's, it's actually going to be, be something worth uh, thinking about <clears throat> for the next couple of days, which is people don't want the truth, but they want the illusion of truth. It's oh, yeah. a very, it's a very, it's like a Slavoj Zizek point where we don't want the thing. We want the representation of the thing because the thing is too threatening, yes. but the symbol of the thing is controllable. And I can go, oh, I'm a, I've just, I just read 12 rules for life and I made my yeah. bed. So I'm a truth follower. It's like, I'm, I'm red pill. I bought a book on the red pill. I paid my $5 on Patreon. I'm red pill now, bro. Now, let me give you a good example to back you up here. I think you're going to love it. You've obviously seen the Matrix trilogy of movies, right? The first trilogy. Yeah, yeah. Now, obviously, they take the red pill or Neo takes the red pill and other people do too. They wake up from the Matrix, right? And what do they come to? They come to the real world, which is a crazy shithole. The humanity yeah. was basically defeated. So far as they obviously can tell, they live in a fucking cave in the deep in the earth, right? They're, they're on the brink of extinction and slavery to the machines. But of course, as we find out, spoilers, anybody hasn't seen this fucking famous movie trilogy, but as we find out, that's the freedom fighters. They're all oh, fighting for freedom and fighting against the machines. It's just another system of control. And it's like these people that, like you're saying, they just want to be the freedom fighters. It's like they don't want to win and wake up to the real truth, which is that, okay, you took this red pill, you woke up, but you're still a slave. You didn't actually yeah. escape much of anything. You just feel like you did. You wanted the feeling and the illusion of it, not the reality, which is the whole thing's fucked. And Neo in the movie has to do something even above and beyond that to yeah. save humanity and get it out of this this rut of slavery. I think I, I think you just made a very Nietzschean point there, which is uh, uh, from from Zizek to Nietzsche, you've gone, uh, mm -hmm. which is that the the attainment of the thing that we say that we want is too much. It's it, it's too much. So nobody really really wants to red pill nobody really wants their fucking wig peeled back like that and their yeah. brain just out in the cold it's it's too much the I existential do. the I existential do. <laughs> for most of us the existential dread would be would be too much so i think i think that's a really really valid point i think that's where a lot of people hate nietzsche um because they mis they misunderstand him but he was a, he's like you he's a die hard truth truther yeah. He's a truther. Like, just give me absolute truth or nothing. And the irony is, is that JP keeps quoting him. And I have a strong suspicion that Nietzsche would not like what JP is doing. I yeah. really don't think he would like what he's doing because it's compromised. It's chopped. It's little bits of truth mixed in with ideological mess. And what Zizek told JP to his face is a pointless wisdom. He, t he told him, he said, he said yeah. it to his face. I hate wisdom. I hate your wisdom. It's nonsense. I agree. Wisdom is wank. Wisdom is total fucking wank. I call it, I call forget, it what Jordan Peterson wisdom. does. It's philosophy soup. It's, right. it's just like people say word salad when people give you yeah. like a, like a narcissist, yeah. like a legit narcissist would give you yes. a word salad to dodge, to be evasive and answering you and hide the truth from you or whatever. What he's yes. doing is not, it's not a personal, you know, in your face lie. But it's yeah. a philosophy soup that distorts, it over uh, deconstructs, it confuses, it's it's hyper complex, it's excessively complex, and it's it's yeah. like a word salad, but intellectually and philosophically, so it's philosophy soup. And, and there's and there's something comforting in it, which means it's like that kind yeah. of soup or broth that you would take when you have a cold, and you can switch off again. Oh, who but I mean, who say, knows? Who knows? Who can know the truth? Who, who knows? Can know? Well, it depends what you yeah. mean. I mean, who knows? It depends and, what and you, you mean by the truth in reality. What do you mean? Because <laughs> your truth isn't my truth, and I'm like, what? Where is all this moral relativistic postmodern bullshit coming from? Isn't it? And remember think, Bill Clinton? Bill Clinton said, "It depends on what your definition of the word is." Is yes. 
It's and, exactly what Bill Clinton said. Yeah. It's, it's, it's exactly what Bill Clinton said. It depends what your definition of the word is, is. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the problem I'm with... i my water. Like, sorry, right. I almost spit the, my water the, out. Um, the, the <sighs> infinite complexity of it usually is a flim flam it's a it's an obfuscation there's there's nothing yeah. there and you said jordan peterson's descriptions are complex yes they're complex but they're so predictably complex that yes. they're very easy to satirize and that's how you know there's nothing there if i can satirize of somebody's philosophy like that that's an indication there's nothing there you can satirize zizek for his modes of thought and his modes of speech, but you can't satirize his philosophy because he is, and it's like him or not like him, whatever. You can't, Jordan Peterson and Zizek are not on the same, they're not in the same league. You know, that's a black belt rolling with a white belt. Zizek is a real intellectual heavyweight, which is why when they did the debate, he steamrolled him. He steamrolled Jordan, he smashed the guy to bits. And not at that point, I lost some respect for peterson but i was like i didn't expect him to do too well against jezek anyway but for peterson's fans for peterson's fans i lost all respect because they didn't see it he got, he got smashed in front of them and they just went oh yeah he did well I'm like did well no. did well <laughs> he just got thrown in a rolling hip lock you they're he they're seeing well. a different movie they're seeing a different movie they're not watching totally. the same thing you are they're brainwashed totally, totally. nothing it's like they're hypnot not brainwashed it's like they're hypnotized you know, like they dance, and, like that's like a little kid who thinks their father is literally Superman and can do literally anything, like literally take a it. bullet and it'll be fine. It's like, no, you, you're, you've been perhaps unintentionally or who knows, right? You're, you've been hypnotized to believing rampant bullshit. This is not reality. This is a human yeah. being who's deeply flawed yeah. in this case. Uh, deeply flawed. I mean, uh, like not to go off on this rant again, but like if, if people go and watch the, the Zizek Peterson debate, it is clear that Zizek, uh, sorry, that Peterson did not even read Zizek's Wikipedia entry. How yep. fucking arrogant can you be? This is what he, he does with Ayn Rand. To. This is what he does with right. Ayn Rand. I've no, I've found specific videos where he's questioned about Ayn Rand. He's, he's questioned about her on a fairly regular basis, not every day. But it's yeah, something that's come yeah. up repeatedly over the years with him online in different interviews with yeah. Dave Rubin and others. And it's obvious to me as an objectivist who's read 2,000 pages on objectivism, probably more. I know it like the back of my hand for the most part. I'm not a professor of it or a philosophy, yeah. but I know it really, really well. He doesn't understand her philosophy even, even on a Wikipedia level. He hasn't even right. opened the fucking Wikipedia page. I'm like, this is why when he's asked about it, you obviously don't understand Ayn Rand. You don't understand the philosophy of objectivism, which is a system of philosophy that's very specific. That yeah. even, you could you could figure this out in five minutes on Wikipedia, at least get a basic elementary understanding of it. He doesn't yes. even have that. He just bullshits his yes. way through it. He talks about her. You know, I said like one Sam, for example, not to be over vague about this. I'll be specific. He talks about how personal responsibility is central to her philosophy, and he was and he was trying to refer to actual fundamentals of her philosophy. This is not true. This is not even close to true. Right. I mean, this is like Christians who argue with me that family is like the fundamental to Christian philosophy. I'm like, no, you have no idea what you're talking about. The Absolutely. word of God, Absolutely. the existence of God, Jesus, uh, yeah. self-sacrifice, uh, yeah. faith, having faith as an epistemological point of knowing things. You're not even, yeah. you don't have a fucking clue what you're talking about. Yeah. And with when he talks about, dude, Ayn Rand, she, now personal responsibility will be very important to her personally. But it's not yeah. even remotely fundamental to the philosophy. It goes way deeper than that in metaphysics and epistemology and moral philosophy and politics. This is it's nonsense. And when he said this, I'm like, this is this is totally straw manning and and it's just flagrant bullshit. You don't, you don't understand anything about her. See, I don't know Ayn Rand. I don't know objectivism, and I don't know the interviews you're talking about. But I believe you 100 percent because of what I saw him do with Zizek. I was like, yeah. The level of arrogance and delusion, so sheer self-delusion you have to have to show yeah. up to a debate that's going to be watched by millions of people for decades to come and not bother reading the Wikipedia entry on the person you're debating against. Yep. You're not well, mate. You're not like, you really yeah. must think you're a very clever chap indeed. <laughs> yep. I mean, look at him. So a... I mean, this is... <laughs> Why has he done that? Do, do we know what the context is from doing that? Uh, his daughter posted it. I think he could still find it. Um, it was some sort of joke for her school or something. I don't know. Some project okay. she was doing. But he dressed yeah. up in drag makeup. I mean, this is very real, whatever the reasoning was. I don't even know if there, how much does the reasoning even matter. 
Like, why did you do that? I wouldn't do that. Like, well, if I if my Bukaki videos ever come out online, I'll do the same thing. I'll be like, it's just a joke, guys. It's just a joke. <laughs> yeah. How did we get back on to Peterson? What were we talking about? The truth and philosophy. Let me go back, though. Oh, okay. Let me take it off, Peterson. You talked about Nietzsche, who I've not read uh, extensively. I've read some of his work, but I need to read I need to read way more. He's kind of next on my chopping block uh, to, to research into. Uh, in particular, because... Yeah, I think so too. Ayn Rand liked him a lot too, um, less so as she aged. Uh, yeah. But even at, even towards the end of her life, she still had a respect for. She didn't respect them like she respected Aristotle and Saint Thomas Aquinas, who were two favorite philosophers by far. Uh, but with Nietzsche, she loved. She called it his reverence for the soul, or the self reverence for the soul, like like a self respect almost, but on a, on a on a level of philosophy. So even though she disagreed with him philosophically, she. She admired, I think, some of the intensity and the tenacity he had uh, in philosophy to to make his points. But anyway, she said something that reminded me of what you said with tr uh, Nietzsche being, you know, truth, 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 you know, 100% for the truth, the absolute truth, whatever it is. Ayn Rand, I think, through one of her villains in one of her books, actually a novel, but I think it's something she would still, she wrote it for a reason. And the quote goes something like this, uh, under the skin, humanity is the same, and I, for one, would be willing to skin humanity to prove it. So, like, basically, like the the truth, the truth, the ripping the truth beneath the truth beneath the truth. Like, whatever it is, I'm willing to fucking skin these motherfuckers alive, at least, <laughs> at least figuratively and philosophically, to find out what's yeah. really under the under the mask. Um, whether it's a person or whether it's an ideology like feminism, or even or the radical leftism or even the conservatives today who are just like these frauds and they, they pretend to care about hypocrisy, but they practice it themselves and they get mad when anyone like me calls out their hypocrisy. Cause now all oh, you're attacking one of your own, same team, same team. It's like, no, I'm not on your team. I'm on, I'm on the team of the reality. You don't get these people don't people that accuse me. Uh, people lately have accused me of being a liberal. They accuse me of being Christian. They accuse me of being conservative. I mean, they're all over the fucking map in the accusations. And the same yeah. fucking, they're arguing with each other. They're like, no, he's a piece of shit conservative. No, he's a piece of shit liberal. I'm like, you people are retarded. Like, I'm not on your team. I'm on the team of reality and truth. You don't, you don't seem to get that. And I'll call out anybody, any fraud or any uh, movement that's stupid or has, you know, flaws in it. Because that to me is how things move towards reality. You have to call out and expose falsehood even if it affects yeah. someone allegedly on your side of your team, that's probably where it's most important to heal. You know, if you're on a, if you're going to pick some team that's allegedly for truth, well, it better be for the truth and you better call that shit out. Otherwise you have traitors in, in a way in your midst. Yeah. Gorillas in the yeah. mist. Oh. Insurgents and dissidents, they need to be rooted out and gulag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if you got to go, uh, that's fine. We can wrap up. Otherwise we can keep talking. It's been an hour and 42 since we started i i'm gonna i actually i have to start getting ready for work soon uh because a good use of my intellectual capacities is to stand on a door in liverpool and stop people from punching each other's faces in when they're drunk nice welcome to dystopia yeah well then we'll wrap up i appreciate your time um next no time problem, maybe we can man. chat about healing from complex ptsd of course, sure. you can also purchase the richard Grannon complex ptsd eight hour masterclass at 21 university there's a link in the description and we helped film this for Richard um, at his request in Poland. Yes. It's very, very good. Very, very professional. Very, very All savage. All exclusive material, guys. You won't have seen this anywhere before. This is uh, this is just on Anthony's site, 21 Studios. Yep. There's free previews. Check it out. There's a discount on it right now. And that's today's sponsor with our guests. So fuck yeah. I love it too. It's the only course we have. I typically hate courses online. I just hate yeah. them. That's why I don't have them. <laughs> But this is the one that I do have because I'm really proud of it. And we filmed a lot of it, which so I know it's really good. And I trust you and your and your content and your ideas and your leadership to help people understand these issues and to resolve their own problems. Because you've done it with me. And I speak personally that you really helped my life a lot. And I love it because I like living a better life and not living in a mental storm of yeah, chaos and trauma. You, yeah. Appreciate that. Everyone also subscribe to his channel. Go to YouTube, search Richard Grannon. Instagram, uh, same thing, or how do they find you? 
Uh, yeah, Instagram. Just put in Richard Granin, you'll uh, you'll find my uh, my okay. leavings there. And uh, YouTube is 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 where there's a ton of stuff. If people don't know me, that's that's a good place mm-hmm. to get to grips with my stuff. What's your new website too? You took down the old one, Spartan Life Coach, I think, right? You have a new one. The the new website because the book's coming out soon. The book's out in three weeks, mate. It's called Cult of One: uh, De- Deprogramming from Narcissistic Abuse. And my website is now richardgranin.com. Okay, cool. I look forward to the book. I didn't know. I'm uh, have to interview you about the book. Can I get it be in America? Absolutely, absolutely. Mate. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna come over to America and, and promote it. So hopefully we could do a face to face interview for that one. Oh fuck yeah, I love it, man. And then obviously 21 convention. Oh yeah, big surprise. You'll be speaking at 21 this year. Tickets out in a couple of days, about a week from now. Yeah. Awesome. All right, man. Thanks for your time, everybody. Thanks for tuning in live and your comments. Um, I didn't read all of them, but I'll go through them and uh, check out a few more. Richard, thank you. Everybody else, peace out. I'll see you next time next Saturday on the Redman Group.